the, uh, why I'm here. And uh, I, uh, going also back to this word uh, that was really fantastically uh, used by Jonathan, this materialization, uh, about which I was actually thinking the whole night, uh, uh, before uh, this event, I thought, yes, it's really about a certain materialization of not mind position, but actually of the context why we have this symposium or this uh, exchange here. And the point is <clears throat> that uh, um, I was invited by uh, the Invisible uh, uh, the Festival of Invisible Cinema, uh, that I didn't know anybody, uh, not personally, and very from afar, uh, almost none about the festival, but uh, I was very, um, uh, very much empowered by this invitation because uh, of the tradition in um, Zagreb of really uh, very important festivals and also of uh, organization, I will say, of uh, the space in terms of uh, a history of theory, practices, uh, and uh, out, uh, coming out in the space in terms of uh, trying to change, let's say, to use this word, uh, word that is maybe also to be reflected about emancipation of the possibilities of the space and different practices. So uh, I uh, um, pre and uh, so we are here because. Uh, it's the uh, Festival of Invisible Cinema, and this symposium is part of the Festival of Invisible Cinema. And my uh, main, uh, uh, so to say, task or the invitation was also connected with what I uh, really uh, thought was actually the trigger for me uh, <laughs> before being invited to the symposium, and this was to make a film program. And I prepared this film program. It started yesterday, and I also had a chance uh, to invite, uh, because it was offered uh, uh, artists or uh, directors of these different films that I put together. And uh, the main topic of this program uh, that uh, I proposed was actually, again, a word was used and uh, appeared also in my summary, and it's all about the question, I will say, of entering with uh, a difference inside all these um, uh, terms that we use uh, without actually differentiation, but not as a differentiation from here and there, but inside. And I call this the colonial racial div divide. So a cut that is not uh, uh, about just we and the other, but is actually a cut that is going inside each of these terms, regarding humanity, regarding cinema, uh, regarding um, uh, agency, regarding such subject. So, and this is not a, a certain a proposition, but is coming out from uh, the last, uh, uh, practically with global capitalism, that we live in the time uh, in which every term has to be amplified, let's say, uh, doubled, because it's emptiness. It's not anymore the guarantee of an emancipation. It's not anymore that we just come and say we talk about the humans, we talk about the unconscious, we talk about cinema. The question is how this division, this cut inside the term, that is possible to be termed very clearly the colonial racial uh, divide, that means something that is completely evacuated in the last period, actually cut the term and has implications of radical meaning and radical term, because film wants to have at least this, not every film, but the film that we think to be a militant, a film who open an emancipative and or videos who open an emancipative pot potentiality actually bring the question also of uh, the division or the change what is at the core of global capitalism and this is life. Life is, as we know this, really part of this. So because of this, why I'm here? I'm here only because first and this is the most important thing of this program that I prepared for the festival and also of uh, uh, simply the possibility to invite certain positions, not all of them, uh, from authors, 
living authors, it's not a historical program, that practically were uh, possible for them uh, to come up with this imitation here. So, this uh, point of departure is key, and the topic between the program and uh, talking here, if you look, go online, you will see it's all about this, uh, what I call racialization. It's about this internal division, and also uh, how the uh, title of this program uh, that I prepare, uh, and it's on this poster one, it's somewhere around, say it's actually about uh, uh, the questions of uh, um, uh, counter histories or what I said for a new politics of representations and also interventions. So this is the general title. Um, what happened is that uh, um, uh, practically in uh, uh, that space, uh, and this is the answer, what could be the unconscious of the unconscious of the whole program is that in the uh, space that we enter uh, having um, uh, also when um, uh, the uh, positions from Filippini, uh, the author that uh, will be presented and conceptualized or by himself and also by Jonathan Beller, then positions that I invited, practically Tushkanets, the cinema was almost empty, if not empty, completely. And I think nobody uh, uh, of you, maybe somebody came and now uh, for five minutes, uh, but mostly it was some of our friends who came to see uh, the works. And this was for me talking, thinking tonight really the unconscious of this unconscious, an empty cinema in which uh, it's a festival going on uh, for all the uh, those inviting uh, artists and the film directors from Filippini coming on the other part of the world and then to have a screening in an empty cinema. You can imagine how fantastic potential is this. A potential to make you to think what will be the militarization. I will take a militant uh, uh, endeavor to actually uh, come with this and what it's the outcome of this is that I wrote the text for the program, I invited the people and I also spent quite a lot of time with this racialization, this uh, political rewriting uh, to prepare a special text for today. And I have this special text that I will use because it's a brand new for something else. Because I said, we have artists here, like Adela Yushich, who is sitting there. We have the, uh, uh, the director from uh, uh, Filippini. Uh, uh, we have programs, and tomorrow is coming another uh, director uh, uh, from Austria, Anja Salamonovic. Uh, she will also present, like Adela Yushich yesterday, uh, in collaboration with Lala, Lana Chmaichanin from Sarajevo, and then Anja Salamonovic uh, tomorrow, a new, brand new film practically something that was done last year, or maybe in the last few years, that nobody is there to be seen. And these things are connected. It's not that my text that I wrote, the additional theoretical work is something else. They are completely connected. And they are also connected, for example, with another film that I presented, which I was working with my colleagues, Anja, uh, uh, Aina Schmidt and uh, Zvonka Simčić. And this was yesterday, the projection of the film with the title 25 years of the lesbian group uh, uh, LL. Uh, 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 that was uh, residing for 25 years from 1987 in Škut Student Culture Center in Ljubljana. And this is also a topic of these processes of racialization. What this means, uh, this is actually a whole way of division and uh, racial uh, 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 processes of um, uh, fragmentation and division. Uh, so to say, sorting uh, and uh, uh, bodies and positions and practices that is not just this, what we call unusual racism of psychological nature. That means that more or less we are 
all races, by the way, especially we white, as a white regime. But it's actually a whole structural system that uh, divides uh, practices, divides references, histories, what matters and what not, what is every time a part of a, a system of quotation and what is never uh, seen, what is not part of the agenda. It's just simple, not, uh, not part to be uh, taken as this process to go to see. Because if we write about films, we have to go to watch films. And which kind of films we watch, it's already a question of certain, what I call a condition of the context. It's already working these uh, processes of racialization because they tell us, no, don't go to see this. This doesn't matter, nothing. Just go to see some of other names. So these things are not naturally done here. And we are in the process that we are just getting all these things. Already the processes of selections are working uh, very deeply and actually forming and constructing our artificiality, but also in a certain way showing uh, these uh, structural positions and divisions. So, and the program uh, so was done, so I said, let's uh, do the thing difference, and I want actually to go back to the program because I have a guest here, and uh, it's a very important work that was done in the last years by Adela Yushich, and the work is, uh, in the center of what I want to talk. So my point was, if uh, instead to ask what all the others think, I want to ask myself with you uh, what Adela thinks, what actually the film by Adela Yushich and Lana Chmaichanin think, what they are uh, bringing for us, and then also to engage to some other um, elements or some other uh, parts of the film program, hoping that, and also maybe no, because it's not about hope, it's about interventions and about where you politically stands. I hope uh, doesn't uh, uh, do a lot with this, but uh, your de decisions to go through this program. So um, I change uh, and maybe uh, give you some uh, 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 elements of uh, um, very diagonally to passing uh, through uh, the, 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 some of the points that I want to say why and what was in this program. And some of the things are also in the summary that is published uh, for this uh, other lecture. But as I said, it's not this Dr. Jack, Mr. Hyde. It's not that I wrote a text where I quote uh, big names, uh, uh, mostly white brands uh, of uh, uh, the Western epistemological, uh, so to say, um, paradigm. And then I prepare something, some program that nobody watch, but this is apart. No, the things are coming together because these are working together. It's a decision and it's also an articulation of a certain position. So that summary is perfectly for this program, though I could also think and talk about other <coughs> things that I worked. But what is the program about? As I said, the title of this program is Politicizing and Rewriting Counter History for a New Politics of Empowerment, Representation and Interventions. I said, I uh, uh, decided to have uh, actually five films, uh, starting with Adela Yushic and Lana Chmaichanin, yesterday, then having this film of the 25 years of the lesbian movement, having today a film uh, that I strongly suggest you to go to see, if, for example, you will not go home and just uh, read uh, books about films. Yeah. Uh, no, today is Na ne Nevlin Nanji, and it's her film, it's at six o'clock, uh, and it's a film uh, that has a very important title because it's precisely going back to this uh, uh, whole uh, context that I had, and her title is Reflections Unheard, Black Women in Civil Rights. And it's actually a film that was done last year uh, it's uh, uh, a position that rethink uh, the questions of labor and capital in the American society going back to the civil movement in US. 
And practically the civil movement in the US, as it was said also in the film, about 25 years of the lesbian movement in ex-Yugoslavia, that is the first uh, uh, coming out in the whole former Eastern Europe and so on, this um, uh, film um, uh, practically, and this film that I showed yesterday is saying the problem of having lesbians and gays, transgender people, among also Roma people and others, and different ethnicities who has the status of second grade citizens in ex-Yugoslavia, it's because practically we are uh, as a society, not because being gays and lesbians, because they know this and they reflect, but we, we are not capable to reflect what was the civil movement uh, going on in US that was the most important process in the 60s by the black uh, uh, population. The African Americans, how they are called today, the, uh, uh, the rights and the uh, call for rights in the uh, society completely segregated uh, was something that actually opens a possibility, besides all the decolonization processes that we had immediately after the Second World War and before, going on from the Haiti republics in 1804 to today and so on and so on. So in this film, tomorrow that will be, today that will be at six o'clock, uh, it's very interesting when we talk about racialization. You say, but what, what why? I'm not black, it's not my business, you know. I, have, I'm an, even less, I'm not a lesbian and gay. Then in that film is super to see that in the 70s, uh, where we think of the 70s as uh, for these models of la labor, and actually uh, when it was the demands uh, for uh, rights, uh, let's say of the working uh, class, we see that actually it was a double, so to say, so it was a Marxist uh, class, and this is also today present, class division, the working class uh, being uh, trapped in all these processes, and then the different way of discrimination that the labor by oh. black people and the black population was actually double, double in this discrimination. Every, uh, so to say, the labor, it was not just labor and capital division, but the labor was also deeply, deeply racialized. The divisions were deeply, deeply racialized. And this category, as I said, that we can reflect today, that not even labor, is not just the question of labor and capital. The mantra that is key, today key relations is about capital and labor. Because we are so precarious, we are wage workers, our possibilities are diminished. It's a question if we can go to the cinema, because maybe we have to work, or maybe we don't have money to go. This changed radically. But this work is not just about this division. It's also doubled if we are from a context that can be seen as really radically racialized. So the questions of the racialized, racialized labor is really one of the key. Racialized sexuality, racialized histo histories. These are, for me, key elements in all these uh, talks, and these are also connected with uh, three points that I bring in this program and in all my thinking in the uh, last period. And this is, first, is the question of life. Life, as I said, central. All the programs, uh, all the program that uh, is done, it's about life and about cinema. How cinema capture the division, how the changes in life. And what this means, these modes of life, as Jonathan put this, uh, uh, the cinematic mode of uh, uh, production, there, in this cinematic mode of production, what is the main thesis? It's actually fantastically described the questions of labor and the question of life. And then we ask ourselves, if it's another mode, what are the implications? And my thesis, also coming out from this program, is that practically with neoliberal global capitalism, that is the structure, that uh, uh, the big way structure, uh, the uh, biopolitics that was for long a main place of uh, also modern, modernist uh, film that mo means a regulation of life, but of the first capitalist life. This is what means biopolitics. 
and because we talk about film, and I'm not a big uh, fa a fan of this, uh, uh, always having a film for any kind of a thesis, because it's just uh, evacuating any power, but it really exists a film. In the moment that um, um, uh, uh, our very known, uh, so to say, uh, point of reference, Michel Foucault, uh, it's co he is putting the coinage of biopolitics. This is this revolutionary point, because he said it's actually a governing of the life. Biopolitics means bio-life, politics, po politics of governing of this life. In that moment, in the mid of the 70s, is this uh, uh, fantastic film that is pure mainstream, but is the most precise with the title how it captured pol biopolitics, and I will explain immediately. The film is actually this one from the Bond series. It's called Let Live, uh, Live and Let Die. And live and let die is the most synthesized formula of what biopolitics means. But in which way? In the difference that apply. Means live for the first capitalist world and let die all over around. Second world doesn't exist. It's the iron, uh, uh, iron uh, carton not even to speak about Africa and other price. And this title of the film precisely is a conceptualization of biopolitics. But then in 2000, I said, in new, with neoliberal global capitalism, it is a change. And this change is very uh, palpable with what I also mentioned in this uh, conceptualization is the militarization of life. In the last decade, after 2001, all what we have, we have, it's unbelievable militarization of life. But this is not just the implication of the military machine all around, in East, uh, Middle uh, East, uh, Ukraine, but is the militarization of the civil society in terms that the civil society is actually presenting and is working with this militar militarization compound with an unbelievable, what is called civil violence. Because in order that you actually can take all these things out, you have to construct a civil society that is completely not interested in all these topics. And this is a pure violent act in not any end of the histories, not racialized labor, no racialized histories, that actually it's behaving like this is not my job, it's not my part of the bread. And uh, uh, what is neoliberal global capitalism actually presenting because of this militarization, a new structure of this mode of life. And this new formula, it's, not, it's different as in biopolitics. So biopolitics is live and let die all the others. But necropolitics uh, does another change. He's saying, and I'm doing reworking this in relation to another uh, um, theoretician who actually, uh, uh, so to say, conceived <laughs> necropolitics, as uh, Foucault conceived biopolicy in the 70s. In 2003, it's an African um, theoretician, Achille Membe, who said, no, biopolitics is not enough is not enough to capture the racialized, uh, super discriminatory processes, but also the militarization, war, the implication of war and the implication of governing actually death and not life for all what's going on around us. And what he's saying, he's saying necropolitics is the managing of death of necro, necro means death from uh, just uh, translation from Latin. And means, and then I thought how we can think about necropolitics, because you, as you see, I am not sophisticated, I'm a pure proletarian, and I like this proletarization of theory, because practically we have to know about what we talk. You know, proletarization. If you want to read a big uh, quotations, you go, you buy books and you read, or you go online because everything is free. But the question is how we actually think about this racialization. And uh, what this necropolitics means, it's a difference. Let live and make die. Let live, that we all now uh, have very palpable around us. What means let live? Practically each of us on different level has actually to uh, uh, provide a proper sources how to survive in this precarity. 
how you will pull if it's not your parents? Who will help you? It's not anymore this, so to say, cozy, not even in the first capitalist world, because also there it's a big restrictions. And here we say this, it's very palpable. Social, it's practically you are without a job, you don't get money from the, uh, from the state. If you are ill, you have to pay if you want to be treat treated on time, otherwise you die, because you need three, four months to wait for something. In Slovenia, from where I'm coming, they are practically, it's better to kill yourself immediately because the social health is completely devastated. So this let live and uh, 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 make die, this let live, it's something that is completely different as just live. Let live means a pure abandonment. And it's very good because Agamben, who is coming after uh, uh, Foucault and in the nineties, start to talk about the bare life and the mode of life. This again about life, but he, what he did for the first time, Agamben cut life, not about talking death and life, but he said life in itself has to be divided into two from inside. This is how bare life people who has no form of life and love life with modes, being, I don't know, professors, where all these fancy things, I'm a professor, being like a kind of rebellious guy or being just a nerd working or somebody who is having a punk frisur or I don't know, all these things, this is mode of life. But the problem is where is the politics here? But uh, Agamben was very precise. He said, what is the, the point of all this is a special managing, a special condition or a procedure, as uh, our friends from uh, um, uh, Belgrade will say, Anna Vujanovic, who use very much the word procedure when they are talking about films. And this means abandonment, a procedural abandonment that is actually seen almost not like a violence, because you are abandoned, nobody is doing anything. But this change radically life and uh, that means uh, live and let live. Let live if you can. So these moments of this change between biopolitics and necropolitics, they were and they are key for the way how to put this program together. To understand these levels of militarization, but also to understand the implications of life in the change with neoliberal global capitalism. This is why if we, you, you will come to watch uh, Nanji Nevlin, uh, uh, Nevlin Nanji film, uh, you will see what means rationalized labor. It's not just labor, this la uh, live, going to work. It's a rationalized labor. It's a labor who is actually divided into two. It's a labor who is actually doubly, if you want, discriminated. Or uh, another film by Anya Salamonovic uh, that will be tomorrow when uh, she is actually making the analysis uh, about the migrant status uh, in uh, the context of Europe. It's not about to talk about migrants, something that has nothing to do with us. Oh, what? Who will talk about migrants? This is boring. This is a human rights festival it's for this. We talk here about uh, important things. No. There, she shows very clearly that actually migrants and the positions of migrants, the positions, for example, for, for, for those who are not part of the European Union, it's a positions that uh, touch uh, these inner relations in the film with the status of the citizen, directly with the status of the citizen. And we see that in, in, in suddenly, it's the status of the citizens, not about citizens and not citizens, but you, you have secondary citizens. You have a whole proliferation of citizens who are not just, uh, so to say, on the other part. And even more, what means to talk about a non-citizen? Can be this a category? And also the status of the nation, uh, nation state, the status of this nation state. So she make a completely arty film. It's about actually a performative film of arts who plays with uh, uh, questions of migrants in uh, the uh, context of Austria uh, and also European Union. 
and practical idea, you understand what are these layers uh, and for the interpretation and talk and discussion that we will have after because she is coming, how we actually relate in this, uh, in this rethinking, but also how the film medium capture precisely this necropolitical. And there it's unbelievable thing. We talk about migrants and we talk, oh, poor migrants, let's help them, refugees. But what you understand, that those who are ready to marry uh, one person who is not, so to say, uh, Austrian by blood, who is actually not white, but is a person who came from somewhere else, this person are completely racialized. They are losing in the film the status of being actually a citizen. To them is said, you have to take completely everything in your hands because you decided to marry somebody who is not actually the citizen of Austria or is not the citizens of Europe. And the citizens of Europe are mostly white. And that means practically these people are let to live. How they know? But so it's very interesting. So it's completely a different uh, change of all these uh, perceptions. And this is what is done in film, in terms of uh, ana analysis, in terms of working with these topics, and in terms to understand what is actually the, the time in which we live. So saying this and coming uh, uh, very near to uh, the last or second part of my presentation, I go on with the works of Adela Jusic and also Lana Schmeichening that work completely with the same, so we will have a chance to see this work uh, uh, by being forced, and this is this fantastic, uh, fantastic word by Badiou. He's saying the, the, the subject is, is produced with forcing. You are forced to do the things. And I, I start with the first work that was presented yesterday, um, and it's uh, uh, the work that was, uh, that uh, it's actually four works that was part of the program, and they are talking pre about all this relation. And the first work that I would like to start is actually the work that was done uh, in uh, 2005, 2007, by Adela Jusic, in which she uh, practically put together the question of the gaze, the question of the weapon. She told me this just before starting. She said, but my work is actually all about this. It's about psychoanalysis. So, and it's true. It's only four minutes, I think, long, the sniper. And it's a, a work that is also working with uh, memory and with, and memory is also racialized. It doesn't exist memory like this. Everything is today divided. Racialized memory means memory who has no place in the compound of memory because it's seen or too problematic or this memory has not the uh, emblematic place of being memory because has no the, the prerogatives of memory and also the relations to history and also with performativity. One of the main point that started to be part of neo, uh, neoliberal global capitalism and global capitalism rethinking of art, the performativity. And you will see in Anja Salamonovic, the refugees are also perf performing. It's all constructed. In, uh, uh, in uh, Nanji, it's all constructed. In the film 25 years of uh, lesbian movement, those who speak, those second grade citizens in Slovenia, who has no the prerogative of being the same citizens as all the other Slovenians, because they have no rights. They, can, they, can, they are completely without rights in front of the law. And, and the constitution is saying we are all equal, but these people are not equal, completely not equal, not historically. That, that histories are seen so marginal that nobody is going to come to see because they will think that this is only about the politics in between their legs. They don't understand that it's actually about the politics in a much wider way. What was going on in Belgrade, for example, with the parades and so on. So I start with the sniper. <laughs> And maybe, yes, 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 I know what I have to do.
the second. One soldier, one truck driver. November the fourth, three soldiers. November the fifth, one soldier, three soldiers. November the sixth, two soldiers. November the two eight, soldiers, one truck driver, car driver. November the tenth, two, two soldiers. soldiers. November the eleventh, one truck driver, one soldier. Two soldiers. November the 12th. Three soldiers. November one the soldier. 13th. Four soldiers. November the 15th. Two one soldier. soldier. November the 16th. One truck driver. One November soldier. The 18th. One soldier. One. Three, three soldiers. soldiers. November the 20th. Two soldiers. November the 21st, two soldiers. November two soldiers. The 22nd, one soldier. November the 23rd, one soldier. One soldier. November the 21st, one truck driver. Three soldiers. November the 26th, one soldier. Two soldiers, one truck driver. November Three soldiers. One soldier. One soldier. One soldier. One soldier, one soldier, one soldier, four soldiers, three soldiers. two soldiers, one truck driver, November one soldier, two soldiers, three soldiers, three soldiers. December the first, two soldiers. soldiers, one soldier, one soldiers. soldiers, December the second, two four soldiers. soldiers, one soldier, December the third. My father, the sniper, was shot by a sniper into his right eye. Ok. Aha, da, da pustim do kraja. Ok. Ok. Ostavim do kraja onda. Ok. Ok. So, uh, for uh, light, a little, little bit of light, please. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, one of the first of these four works uh, that I want to show, and they uh, are connected with uh, Adela, uh, and uh, then I will show also the work by La uh, Lana Chmajčanin, and uh, um, what I called, uh, actually, the, the works are part of uh, a whole um, setting of uh, uh, militarized uh, and also uh, social and political context of Bosnia and Herzegovina, but also of uh, uh, specifically the way how the machine of war enter in the relations of uh, uh, producing a work, but also how uh, uh, the memory is constructing through this. And um, uh, the works are really, uh, all the four works are connected with uh, the context or condition of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, going uh, uh, on from the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, making a relation uh, to the militarization of that whole uh, uh, space, but also the implications, I will say, of other parts of ex-Yugoslavia, military and paramilitary uh, gruppation from Serbia, Croatia, uh, what was going on in Bosnia, and this produced a, a specific um, a social and political context that effectuate directly the work, the production of the film of the video, the question how the gaze and memory is constructed. And in this concrete work uh, that was done in 2007, um, it's uh, the story uh, uh, that uh, it's uh, um, possible to, uh, to take, or maybe it's necessary uh, now to, to even more contextualize, is that uh, Yushich's father um, is at the center, and he was, uh, he began serving uh, uh, in the Bosnian army in 1992, that was the beginning of the war in the Bosnia and Herzegovina, and uh, his job was to hunt down the Serbian snipers who were shooting at civilians. Uh, the uh, soldier, the, uh, he, uh, his, uh, uh, her father died and uh, uh, 
she said uh, in the talk uh, that uh, when um, she she was uh, 10 years old if i'm uh, correct you find the book uh, the small booklet of uh, uh, the sniper the father who was always recording uh, this um, uh, uh, how, what what was going on every day this booklet was actually after that uh, uh, taken by uh, the authorities because this was also a process and to every of the family were always given a photo and uh, the uh, uh, Bosnian authorities they they uh, they uh, ask no, just, uh, uh, the army base uh they the ask for was also in the army, so they, they came to the house to take the diary that he led as a sniper because he had this, like <clears throat> the diary to the dates which i'm kind of uh, uh -huh. the dates are what it's like can we have like this and that and that and they take this away of course so this was taken and the point is that um the uh, the question of uh, um, going back and to uh, to reperform the memory of uh, this data and to connect them uh, uh, into the work in which actually uh, the, the question that is posed is the question of the gaze. That means actually the weapon and uh, the gaze and the eye, how they are put together, but even more how you organize a space of memory in a, a highly politicized um, social and political context. And I think that this work uh, is uh, um, uh, important because it actually shows a very uh, interesting but also very clashy all this relation in um, uh, rethinking uh, <coughs> practically what will be, simply to say, the necropolitical uh, effects of the memory who is brought and actually has to work or rework also the necropolitical context because Bosnia and Herzegovina is, uh, um, uh, and this was, I think, the first case before the term was actually um, put to life by Ashila Membe in 2003, uh, the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and specifically if we think about Srebrenica, was a clear necropolitical moment in our history, of the history of ex-Yugoslavia. Uh, so uh, was actually, and especially if we think about the stories, there was really uh, the questions let live for those who could escape, and the others, if we think about Srebrenica, was actually just part, actually they were uh, killed, so the implication was that the war machine of different para paramilitary and military state organization practically killed uh, 8,000 uh, 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 boys and uh, men. So in this way, um, uh, the uh, work has an important place in this relation toward this division as I brought about how to think about life, but also how to think about work like video, who goes back and actually rework in such a condition the questions of memory. The second work that I would like to show is a work that was done by Lana Chmajchen in 2005, and it's called The Female President. And uh, uh, this work uh, I uh, suggest we watch, and then uh, uh, we try, I try to contextualize, because I think many of these works, at least these four that were proposed, they work uh, onto the question to uh, be seen, and then to go back into giving the, uh, the, so to create the second frame of articulation. Uh, light, please. Tako da sam se sam pretravila, 
Te sve se počelo otimat i trgati. Pružala sam im lako, ali bez uspjeha. Jer smo je počeli grubo, šamarašću pa onda udarati petu. Moja me majka pokušavala tako i sama, slaba i nemočna da zaštisi. Međutim, on su i ništa dobro. Udara u pesnica vrš i počeo da se nije skida i odjeću, dok je nisu skoro potpuno sluka. Majka je pleta spakala i prekrnjala da ih puste. Oni su je još jače udarali. Prišla su je trojca i bacila je na podal topsa. Onda su je naredila da se obuče i nakon što su je stidnurena, upriljana i krva pozigla na strnom svoj namenu. Majka ih je sa poda preklinjala i mola da me puste, govoreći im da sam djevojka, da sam nevina. Ali ništa od toga nije pomogla, jer su prema meni bili jako zli. Dvojca su me čuvala, a dvojca su me potpuno vukala, te povalo me na pol autobusa koji preto do moj mani. Tu se niče zvorasa izredali na meni. Silujući me i tako mi odzideću moju djevojačku nevinu. Sve je to bilo pred mojom devetogodišnjom sestrom i pred mojom nanom, koja je imala preko sedamdeset godina. Jako sam se varla i nisam mogla da se pomakne. Dok sam bezpomoćno ležala, oni su me šutali cipelama vičući. Dižu se turkinja, prljava i ljubine što se od dana srpkinja. Tako ćemo izdjevati i sve turkinje i od njih napraviti srpkine, jer Srbija će biti od Stambola pa do Beđa. Okay, um, so to give a, a context to the work uh, is uh, that uh, um, the work, as was also possible to see in the last uh, part, um, is uh, actually uh, based on uh, Lana Chmachani make like a research and uh, she is uh, making a reference to a testimony of young women raped and tortured during the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina while mimicking the strong face and body gesticulations typical of politicians, orators and or dictators. The text of the testimony is taken from the book I beg them to kill me Crime Against the Women of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And this was a book that was published in 2000 and was um, done or put together by the Center for Investigation and Documentation of the Association of Former Prison Camp Inmates of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And it was published in Sarajevo. So besides the shocking testimony, which awakens mixed emotions of sadness, empathy, anger, and even shame, as we watch this video, it also seems that the author, uh, Lana Chmanchanin, strongly emphasized the contrast, and this I think is the point of the work, between what we see and what we hear. Instead of compassion for a topic that nobody likes, because this is the first uh, uh, so to say, uh, a reaction. It will be, in such a case, a compassion um, into the topic. The female president provokes anger and political positioning, but it provokes through which? In a certain way, through the emptying of the content that is actually presented as a kind of performative rhetorical mode. And this uh, is resembling very much the contemporary politicians in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but in EU in general. So the way how is uh, uh, performed, how this performative enters in a, a certain material of history, but also memory, that has to be contested. We, we can have completely, uh, so to say, we can be empathical, we can say this is not true, this is a, just a b propaganda. But the question that is posed now is, um, uh, from the work 
and what the work proposes is how in the time of necropolitics, where actually this life is just let live, that means also an unbelievable individualization, where the social structure and the political demand are completely seen almost an obsolete, where human agency is presented as actually having no redundancy, because no um, place, no meaning. How? And on the other part, be, on the other part of the necropolitical, instead of and on the other part of the let live is actually make die, and we have the whole last 10 years of this history, how actually to uh, uh, implicate and how to rework this in the work, how to make the work. And one of the, the points here is precisely this reusage of the performative, but with uh, the preposition that I think is really key and is going back to another uh, uh, theoretician, Sarah Ahmed, who is saying that in the time of racialization, of the racial and colonial divide, the performative, though we are thinking all the time and we are almost ready to bet on the performative, because the performative is what is the main uh, theory of the performative. The performative is uh, doing what is saying. She is saying is not the case. The performative is actually not always, because of different contexts, political, social, historical, is not doing what actually we think is doing. The performative is actually absolutely not working. So because of this, of the non-performative of the performative, I think that here is precisely this implication in the work. The work is in the way how this performative is functioning, because you could come there on the screen, on the setting that is a work for the screen, so it's only a work as a film for the video film. You could come, it could be uh, this exposition of these atrocities <laughs> and so on. No, here the performative is precisely saying, because of the sacro-political, we can come and ask for an empathy, we can come and talk about this, but practically these things is a question if they work. Because of all these other, the mode of life, the change and so on, so the implication is to show also that the performative, as non-performative, actually is provoking even a bigger, so to say, impact onto what is presented as, uh, uh, as a content and also onto what can be seen as a kind of a memory. Because to whom this memory, to this, uh, uh, so to say, um, uh, uh, talking uh, or um, the book that is having, uh, is uh, recapturing all these uh, stories, actually to whom this is speaking, to whom this is having any, any relation. And uh, going into uh, this uh, vein, I, I want to show uh, just a small part of the third work that was in the program. And this work uh, was done by Adela Yushich in 2011. Uh, the title is, When I Die, You Can Do What You Want. And I have to now say in difference uh, to before, what is the content, because we will not have a chance to see to the whole work, because the work is 20 minutes long, just maybe one small part. So uh, this work, it's about the line of division, this is my interpretation, between memory and history. Uh, why this line of uh, division? Where I say history fails, uh, it's actually, we get on that place, and uh, Yushic is uh, pretty uh, 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 interesting uh, in bringing this, we have actually reperformed personal memories. And these personal memories are returning with the regions, I will say. It's almost like a kind of uh, uh, hello back effect, because uh, we see Yushic, I, I suppose, we don't know, but um, uh, we see hands, coloring her, uh, her grandmother hair. And while this is going on uh, for 20 minutes, uh, we actually uh, get uh, um, the function of the voice is really important. We get the whole stories that is actually uh, a story reperformed as a memory of the grandmother. And these uh, stories that are reperformed with a voice that has a specific dramaturgy in itself. So it's not a classical American, I will say, off voice. 
that is a, also a classical of voice of the BBC documentaries that somebody is explaining, you see, so on. But is the voice has the implication uh, really to open space, time, and histories. And there well, is an analysis of the last century, simply to say, through this recollection. We will just see one very uh, small part, uh, uh, just to get an idea, and uh, uh, when it will be the next program of Adela Jusic in Zagreb, the next time, please go and see the work. Okay. Aha, uh -huh, it's working. Okay. Sound pojačan, molim te. Okay, this was what I, I left. Um, uh, this part, uh, also a very good uh, 
point of uh, conclusion of this part. And then I just finish uh, with the last work that is actually a collaborative work. Now we saw some works by uh, Adela Yushich. Uh, unfortunately, the last, uh, this work from 2011, only one small part. And then we saw the work by Alana Chmaichanin, a female president, and in um, 2011, they actually made a collaborative video performance. And the title of this collaborative video performance is uh, I Will Never Talk About the War Again. Uh, it was done in 2011 and Adela gave me <clears throat> yesterday just uh, two minutes because it's a repetitive work and what is about? It uh, refers to the post-war situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The artists promise each other and this again, it's very important to understand it's a performative oath, performatively, in the work. They promise to each other uh, not to talk about the war anymore, while obsessively repeating the same sentence over and over. And it's an obsessive performative statement that exposes the circularity conditioning the social, economic and political texture of Bosnia and Herzegovina today. So practically, it's showing uh, this circularity, I will say also of art in a certain way, this circularity of a certain impossibility, but on the other part, uh, also this obsessive mechanism that is really constitutive uh, for this um, uh, ne necropolitical, because in the necropolitical, besides life, uh, history is very much attacked, so memory is something that stays like new force. And on the other part, um, in, uh, necro, the necropolitical, in a certain way, uh, produces a certain circularity. And this circularity uh, is presented like a transparency. Like we see the things and we say, but we know all this. Why we are talking? Why is she showing these works? I want to see uh, uh, big names. I want to see Tarantino. I want to see, you know, who matters about this? But this uh, uh, circularity, this transparency is actually very problematic because of this feeling that we know everything and that this is nothing because we need potentiality. Practically, this is the story, practically with this, just thinking about this and saying we uh, take, uh, uh, we we make like a very problematical, apolitical intervention in the public space because practically uh, we, uh, in a certain way, normalize and we don't question what are the fundaments of such thinking. And in this work, I think it's really interesting because in this obsessivity, uh, be, and you will see these two minutes, uh, many possibilities are open, open in terms of history and time through the performative that again is actually an anti-performative because what is saying uh, in a certain way is not doing. They say we will not talk about the war anymore, but they are talking all the time about the war. So this is also very interesting, showing that the performative, this big procedure that everybody is just betting on, is also something that has to be actually, so to say, taken under uh, uh, analysis. That we cannot just say the performative is the last possibility for our intervention. Misliš? Da, da, da. Ja bih da Ja više nikada neću pričati o ratu. 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 Ja više nikada neću Ja 
Ja više nikada neću pričati o ratu. Okay, so with this I finish. Thank you very much.